going to start from scratch. I got my two foldables here. Here's the first one. Here's my second one. We're using Too Soon a Woman, and guess what? That stinking Mr. Surface gave me the same assignment. Prove that Mary is brave. So, I'm going to write the character Mary in the center, and I'm going to put that she's brave. And since I've read this story too many times, I know that she's brave because she ate a possibly poisonous mushroom. I'm just going to indicate that by writing mush. I know that she's brave because she went out in the woods looking for that horse. I'm going to indicate that by going out the horse and a little woods on the side. And you know what? i got to include that bear, too, because that's what makes it brave in the first place. Finally, she stood up to Pa. He's a straight-up stranger. What's the deal? Now, I could definitely come up with more, like her choice to run away from an abusive household. However, I'm not going to for the sake of time. This is my pre-writing. I just finished it in 45 seconds. I usually give you five minutes. Why? I'm too nice. On the second side, we have our thesis. That's our zero plus three. What does a zero plus three stand for? Follow me to my very special chalkboard. Opinion. What's our opinion here? It's Mary is brave. That's not a fact, like one plus one equals two. And then three reasons. All right, I call it O plus three. You can call it opinions plus three. You can call it your opinion plus three reasons. Take a look here at my thesis. Mary is brave because, I'm going to underline my opinion now, Mary is brave because, here comes the three reasons, because she stood up to Pa, comma, she ate a possibly poisonous mushroom. You're going to see some spelling mistakes here. Luckily, you're the generation that has solved spelling once and for all. Thank you for doing that for us adults. And, oh, geez, what's the other one? I'll check my pre-writing. She uh, went out in the woods to look for the uh, horse and went out alone to look for the horse. All right, so this is one reason she stood up the pot. This is another reason she ate a possibly poisonous mushroom. Here's my third reason. Went out alone to look for a horse. That breaks down into three different topic sentences. O plus three equals O plus one. O plus one. O plus one, just like the poster at the top of my room. All right? Where do these go? They go right in here. Pre-write. Thesis. And then this is, this is where our topic sentences go. All right? Now, I only have three topic sentences, so guess what? Free ride. Ooh. You make an X three times in a row, it feels like bingo. Somebody pay me. All right, so topic sentence. I'm going to abbreviate it for the other ones, but you can see that I'm writing it out fully on this first one. TS here and TS here. Well, I write the same opinion each time. Mary is brave. Mary is brave. Mary is brave. Why? Because she stood up to Pa. See how I'm writing the same reason again? Because she went out in the woods alone. Nice job, Mayor Bear. And finally, she ate a possibly poisonous mushroom. Now comes a very important step. I have to go back into the story, which you've seen underneath here, and I have to find three quotations to match each of these topic sentences. I'm going to start with the first one. She stood up to Pa. Let's take a look in a book, Reading Rainbow. All right. Oh my god, I found it right away. Pa didn't want her along, but she stood up to him with no fear in her voice. And since I am cherry picking here, I'm just going to take the second half of that and just write, quote, and that's what the Q stands for here. She stood up to him with no fear in 
her voice. And I'm going to cite that because I'm college ready. Johnson, page 170. Now I got to do that for the other ones too, because you went out into the woods alone. Wonder where I'm going to find that. Probably on page 172. Oh my gosh, where am I going to find it there? Probably right in the middle. Oh my gosh, I know this story so well. Thank God I paid close attention to Mr. Surface's brilliant lectures. All right. Now I find my second quote, and guess what? Here it is. The fifth day. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to write the number five and a TH. That's just the kind of mood I'm in tonight. The fifth day. The fifth day, Mary went looking for the horse. And that's uh, Johnson, that's Johnson page 172. All right, and then finally, she ate a possibly poisonous mushroom. It's right over here, it's possibly poison. So I'm gonna speak to that with my quote right here on page 173. Uh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, where are we gonna find a good one? Um, I don't know how it'll be if it's poison. Oh my gosh, I don't know how it will look feel or smell in here if I just ate a poisonous mushroom. So, quote, it's dialogue, so I put a little apostrophe there. I don't know how it will be if it is poison. God, I hope she's okay. Wait, I read the story. I know she's okay. But I have to convince the audience that she's brave. That's my number one thing. Now i got to pop these in context. I'm going to write the full word context here, but I'm only going to write con for the other two for the sake of time. Now, I would say try to average between three and four events that lead up to your quotation, that put your quotation in context, so your summary of sorts should be one to four uh, notes long, not in complete sentences. So, she stood up to pile with no fear in her voice while the family ran out of food. So I put family slash food. Jeez, what else? They went out traveling. They knew that there would be work in the next town. They met Mary. Pa didn't want Mary along because they didn't have, like I already said, food or what do you call that? Money. What else? On the fifth day, Mary went looking for the horse. Well, Pa left the family and left Mary in charge. Uh, a bear chased the horse away. So the bear is still on loose, loose, but she goes out alone, and you'll see my fourth note is alone in woods. All right, and then finally, uh, context for this, Pa left, like we said, they lost the horse, they couldn't eat that, they're starting to starve to death, and then finally, Mary finds a mushroom, eats it. Oh, that's my first foldable all done. Pre-writing. Thesis. Topic sentences. Quotes. Context, context, context. That's done. Now, pause this video. All right, guess what? We're moving on to the second foldable. We got a topic sentence, topic sentence, topic sentence. All we have to do for the second foldable is rewrite those topic sentences across the top, which I've taken the time to do. Then we got to find the matching quotation, which is underneath each topic sentence. Quotation, quotation, quotation. And guess what? Your favorite Boy Scout nailed that as well. Boom, boom, boom. Now we're going to start on explanation one. That's when you put the quotation in your own words. So let's see what we got for this first quotation. It reads, she stood up to Pa with no fear in her voice. We've got to put that in her own words in third person. So, who's the she? Mary. So on this top one here, Mary said so stood up to Pa. So I'm going to put uh, uh, decided to stand up to Pa, even though she did not know him. 
Because when I stand up to my dog Brody, I don't have fear in my voice because we know each other. Well, Pa's a complete stranger. Alright? No reason to stand up to that goofball. Alright? Next quote. The fifth day, Mary went looking for the horse. Alright? So, I'm going to write five days after Pa, pa left. Mary went out alone to look for the horse. And then finally, Mary is afraid because she ate a possibly poisonous mushroom. I don't know how it'll be if it's poison. Mary is essentially saying, if I start to die from poison, it third person. Mary is saying that if she starts to show symptoms of being poisoned, things might get gruesome. Alright? Mary's tough. So we're going to work our way. That's explanation one. Now we're going to knock out explanation two. And that's the most important part. So Mary is saying that if she starts to show symptoms of being poisoned, things might get gruesome. Well, nothing is worse than a gruesome death. I'll tell you that as someone who's still alive. So, what I need to do so okay, whatever the heck that is off the table, is this. I need to convince my audience that Mary is brave based on that evidence. So, I suggest that you use a connection to explain yourself. Well, she uses my man, Jesus. And she says, Jesus and Mary are similar. So I'm going to write that for my explanation too. I'm going to say the author, and look at her, uh, not an unhandsome face that she, the author, suggests that Mary is brave. Mary shows, and I'll use his last name here, Christ-like heroism. Boom. You see what I did? I used a connection and this piece of evidence, the quote, here. And I proved that Mary was like Jesus, and that shows that she's pregnant. Alright, this one's a little bit easier. Five days she went out looking for the horse. Well, we just have to put it in context. So I'm just going to say, most people would not venture out into bear infested woods to that. Mary did. Be brave way to be selfless, man. And finally, she stood up to pop. Well, like I said earlier, I was already intimating this. Mary does not.